When you think of fashion designers, the first thing that would come to your mind would probably be clothing, shoes, fashion accessories, and maybe even cars. But you probably would never even think cell phones, and even if you're weird enough to think fashion designers and cell phones were a good mix, the phones that would come to mind would probably be something like Tom Brown's Special Edition Galaxy Z Flip, or maybe the XL Brie line from Siemens in 2003 that was supposed to be fashionable. But the one phone you'd probably never think of is the LG Lotus. In fact, you'd be forgiven for never even knowing this phone exists, despite it being heavily promoted and publicized. The LG Lotus and Lotus Elite appeared for a short moment in the 2012 film Ted, were shown off by singer and fashion designer Victoria Beckham, and most popularly were favorite of fashion designer Christian Siriano, who designed a vest and scarf with pockets specifically tailored to fit the LG Lotus. His designs showed up at Fashion Week New York in 2009, and were a pretty big success from what I can tell. Several sources stated that Siriano seemed obsessed with the Lotus, saying it was sleek, chic, and fabulous. In fact, the LG Lotus page on Wikipedia even claims that Siriano designed the Lotus, but I can't find any other sources to back that claim. I would assume if it were true, LG probably would have boasted about it everywhere, but there's no mention of Siriano on LG's website, on the phone's box, or in the user guide. But anyway, let's take a look at the LG Lotus to see what this fashion phone is all about. Hey guys, and welcome back to another Tech Show video. Today, as you already know, we're going to be taking a look at the LG Lotus, a designer flip phone from 2008. Before we go on, I do want to mention that there is the LG Lotus Elite, which is pretty much an entirely different phone, being released two years later in 2010. Unfortunately, the Lotus Elite has been pretty elusive and I haven't been able to get one for this video despite many desperate eBay searches, so if I ever end up buying one, I'll probably make a separate video about it. This video is just about the first LG Lotus Model LX600 from Sprint. Let's first talk about design because that was really the make or break thing about this phone. You see, some people absolutely loved it, while others thought it was just plain ugly. Some people seemed to think the design was too feminine for a guy to use, and while I thought that was a kind of strange assumption, it did seem like most buyers of this phone were women. Other people's opinions aside, let's take a look at this phone, starting with the box the phone comes in. And the box is just a phone box, nothing special, which is kind of sad. Of course, most people just rip open the box and throw it away immediately, but I think LG could have at least come up with a slightly different take on the traditional phone box, and it definitely would have made for better first impressions. But the lackluster design choices don't really stop there. As far as the phone goes, I don't think this design is particularly groundbreaking. When closed, it just looks like a typical clamshell phone that's slightly more square than a normal phone. To be fair, I think the biggest thing about this phone was the unique color choices you could get it in those being red and purple. It wasn't just colors though, there were also designs on the front that made the phone look pretty unique. The red one has fancy looking swirls, and the purple one has designs that look like little flowers of plants. The inside numpad buttons also match the color theme, which is a nice touch. There is also this plain black one, which as I mentioned earlier, looks mostly like a typical flip phone. Flipping it open though, you'll definitely start noticing some differences, especially if you're a phone nerd like me. First, this is the only flip phone I've ever owned with a horizontal display to fit the wider body. It's also the only flip phone I've ever seen with a full QWERTY keyboard, which I guess is the reason the phone is so wide. And it really is wide, it doesn't really come across on camera as being particularly unusual, and probably in real life most people wouldn't really notice anything strange, but having used so many normal flip phones and even some not so normal ones, this one is just kind of strange to hold, especially next to a normal flip phone. So yes, this design is weird, but not much special about this, it's really just a wide flip phone with a full QWERTY keyboard. But as I mentioned earlier, the designer aspect really comes from these unique color options. I only have this lavender purple one here, but it's a pretty eye-catching design. I think it could have been cool if there were more color options, but apparently this purple one was the most popular option. Design aside, let's talk about the functionality of this thing because it's a little bit interesting at least. First, this was one of the only devices beside the Samsung High Note and the Samsung Rant to have Sprint's one-click interface, which really is just another proprietary cell phone user interface, very similar to the user interface on many other devices from the era. One aspect of the one-click interface that was slightly more forward-thinking is the home screen bubbles, which are pretty much the same thing as widgets that you'd get on Android and iOS. 
you could add weather, news, horoscope, and stock market bubbles to your home screen to get a quick update on this stuff. But other than that, the one-click interface is pretty much just Sprint's last-ditch effort to try to get more people to join their online services like Sprint Navigation. If you'll remember, this was 2008, one year after the iPhone was launched, and not long before the first Android devices would launch. Sprint was probably a little worried that these new phones with operating systems they couldn't fully control might take over the smartphone market with their own more appealing services to offer. Which is what happened, so I guess they were right. The rest of the phone's software is pretty nondescript though, aside from some boring game demos. Space Monkey being one of the dumbest games I've ever played, Guitar Hero 3 which doesn't even work offline, and Jewel Quest 2, the most fun of the three but still boring. And that's pretty much it for software features. It's a very typical 2008 Sprint phone with not much to boast except a fancy pink plastic exterior. Oh, and I forgot, that 2 megapixel camera. To be honest, it's not that bad. It shoots photos that wouldn't make me look twice, both in a good way and a bad way. In both indoor and outdoor photos, the subjects were clearly visible and relatively well exposed. But there's no autofocus, so you've just got to be lucky enough to get your photos in focus, especially if the subject is very close. So don't even think of trying to shoot macro photos of bees or flowers, or any of that stuff because you'll be disappointed by the blurry photos you get. Like most other flip phones, the Lotus can launch the camera app while closed so you can take selfies and view them on the exterior display. It's not a unique feature, but at least it's there. And now let's talk about the music side of this phone because while it wasn't really advertised as being a media device, it does have some features that make it similar to other music phones from Sprint. For one thing, it has the Sprint Music Store, which can be launched with this dedicated music button on the side. And speaking of music buttons, we've got three other buttons used to control music playback, but they're kind of hidden in plain sight. Right here below the outer display is this reflective bar, which doubles as fast forward, rewind, and play pause buttons. It's actually pretty cool how you'd never even know they were buttons until you launch the music player. LG did a really good job hiding the buttons, you really can't see them unless they're on. But aside from some impressive music controls, how about those two little speakers on the front of the flip? I'm happy to say they're actually pretty good, and while I can't say for sure, I'm guessing these speakers are about as good as you're going to get on a 2008 flip phone. As a summary of this phone, it's honestly just another boring flip phone from LG, with the exception that it's wider than normal, has a full QWERTY keyboard, and is available in some unusual colors. LG apparently didn't get the memo that this phone was boring though, because in 2010 they released the LG Lotus Elite, which did have a front touchscreen but still looked dated and ran the same old proprietary OS. Maybe I'm being too harsh on the Lotus Elite since I've never used it myself, but I know the original Lotus and it isn't a good phone. Just take a look at the Amazon reviews. The only positive reviews are from people who accidentally left a review for a different phone. In conclusion, maybe I spent a little bit too much money for these two units just to test out, so if you could support the channel by subscribing, that would be hugely appreciated. As always, if you have any thoughts, suggestions, or anything else, just leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you in the next video.